in this video i'm going to uh prove with some facts that why uh demetrius andre is one of the best businessmen in boxing uh a lot better than what people have said over the past people have put out lies and corruption and they're in, they've been in cahoots with people to push false and bad information when they got the information right in front of them now most of us we don't have to go and try to interview people this is information highway we got information everywhere on the internet all over the place social media there's people you can contact directly so with the Demetrius Andre threat thing I want to go back to why I'm one of the best at this I really watch boxing I do this everybody that y'all watch I'm probably I'm just gonna tell you I'm pro I probably didn't hit on more fights than them I know what I'm talking about uh with Demetrius Andre he had the zone deal in July of 2018, right? Now, you think about it. A lot of people don't know, but Demetrius Andre was the first big signing of the zone. Yes, you've heard that. He was the first big signing of Matchroom and the zone. Oh, really? Oh, y'all don't. You don't understand what I'm saying. Let me say it again. Demetrius Andre was a big signing on the zone before Canelo, before Golovkin, before everybody that you like. The only person that was over there was Anthony Joshua. And that's because he's been signed to match wrong before it was the zone that was around. Andre's been on the zone. By the time Danny Jacobs signed with the zone, he was having a fight on the zone. Andre had a lot of talent that followed him over to the zone. A lot of guys that are well-off millionaires right now without even fighting much on PBC. Let me say that again, man. The guys that Andre and other guys were trying to fight that went to uh, the zone, they're, they're more, they they have more opportunities at uh, paydays than the guys that y'all think that was on PVC. Why you think they was over there? You think they was over there just to play around? They got paid over there. They was getting paid. What Danny Jacobs told Charlo? I'm getting the M's. I'll get, I'm, I'm going to get there. Like he said, I'm going to get there. Danny Jacobs said, I'm there. I'm him. I'm telling you. Listen to this information. I know what I'm talking about. So Canelo goes and signs with the zone two or three months later. Match room the zone. Same platform as Boo Boo Andre. Hmm. Canelo, why are you following the horrible fighter to the zone? Why are you following bombs? Why don't you go fight with the best? You say he's a bum, he's a horrible fighter. Why are you following the horrible, horrible fighter? Why do you keep following him? Every time the horrible fighter goes somewhere, Canelo follows right behind him. He goes to the zone, Canelo goes. Check the record. And you get in my comments talking crazy, I'm going to block you. Check it. Everywhere he goes, Canelo goes. You don't believe me? Okay, let me tell you another thing too then. When did Andre get the PVC? Oh, he got the PVC in January? Oh, okay. When did Canelo get over there? Don't tell me Canelo had a, a fight signed to fight Charlo in January of 2023. Do not say that to me at all. That is a lie. So now we're getting somewhere. And who did the, who did the zone and uh match room sign? The same time they signed uh Canelo, right around the same time that fall. Yep, you're right. They fall. Gennady Golovkin. That's what they signed. Triple G got signed that fall. Triple G could have had plenty of opportunities to go other places. He had guys at 160 all over the place. Triple G was there. He 
signed with them. They both got paid. Now, mind you, let me ask you a question. Why didn't they sign before Andre went over there? So you're telling me Eddie Hearn was signed Demetrius Andre before he signed Canelo? Really? Why would Canelo and Triple G sign on the same platform as a horrible fighter? Ew. Yeah, man. I don't believe none of it. If you're so horrible, you going over there where he at? If he's such a bad business guy, why is the zone still around? Why is Canelo fighting on the zone? Why is Canelo considered a good businessman? And he followed and he followed Demetrius Andre to go fight um Triple G. Then he said he wasn't gonna fight Triple G. And he ended up still fighting Triple G. So a lot of things that I've been hearing doesn't make sense when it comes to that fight at all. You know what I'm saying? So I already knew what the plan was. They signed Triple G. They said, we're not. Canelo said, I'm never fighting him again. He accused me of doing this and this. And went over there and fought him. And I knew you was going to fight him. I knew you was going to fight him two or three times. I think the Wilder fight made them fight three times. Because they were like, let's make this a trilogy. But I knew he was going to fight Triple G. When they signed together, I said, oh, okay. And they signed the same time as Andre. Now, mind you, Andre signed with uh, the zone. Oh, why would he do that? He doesn't care about his career. He could have signed with PVC. They have all the fighters over there on PVC that's in his weight division. Oh, he could have fought Charlo. He's du He's ducking. He doesn't care about his career. I heard everybody saying that. Man, dude's been like a lot of money lying. Oh, he doesn't care about his career. How did he? What? He's undefeated, dude. Team USA fighter. He doesn't care. Oh, he doesn't care about his career. How? But then we sit up here and say, well, but let me get back to the uh, the zone situation though. So, Demetrius Andre July, Canelo October, Golovkin probably around September I think probably, um, uh, or October to November. Danny Jacobs in January. Also, Tevin Farmer uh, came out of that situation. Now, mind you, Tevin Farmer didn't have a home uh, where he was having uh, uh, fights after fights after fights. When he got the, the zone after Andre was there, and Andre was the first American that was over there that's actually letting people know, like, hey, they're taking care of me. They, uh, they're doing everything they're saying. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm, getting the, uh, I'm getting paid the way I want to. Because what, what the issue was at that time was it wasn't no fights being made. He wasn't active, and he wanted to get paid. Same kind of deals that Canelo's getting. He's doing the same thing. He's not getting credit for it, but he's doing the same kind of fights. He's going in the zone. The man was the first person at the zone before Canelo was there. How is he not a good businessman? He was in a situation where he trusted uh, Rock Nation uh, because they had uh, a reputation with guys like Kevin uh, Durant and other guys, and the fights really didn't come to fruition. They're not really... Uh, the expertise is not uh, boxing. Boxing is uh, a difficult game, especially when it comes to matchmaking and different things like that. Promoters don't really have to work with you. So you can be uh, shunned out easy. But um, he's basically in that situation where he was with promoters and different companies where he couldn't get things done. It's just the whole business was messed up. Now, he's, he explains that he's transparent with everything. Like, now, I don't have a good fight. Uh, I don't have high competition right now. And I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm trying to get everything in order. Now, fans are like, oh, he, he pulled out the Charlo fight. Bro, I don't want to hear nobody repeat nothing Charlo said about Demetrius Andre. Do you hear me? I don't want to hear nobody repeat Charlo words. Repeat Canelo words. Don't repeat uh, Charlo words. But um, 
the whole situation. Look at all those guys that's American that's uh, that have gone to the zone since uh, Demetri Andre has gone there. Bro, he's a pioneer, bro. He's went over there to the zone, and look how many Americans have gotten paid now. Tevin Farmer, he wasn't getting those looks, those same kind of looks he had got in the zone. He wasn't getting those looks somewhere else. And he was active, getting good money. He not hurting right now. He don't got to fight. So at the end of the day, that just lets you know. Bro, everybody's a good businessman. Just because you ain't got Floyd around you and all that stuff, we don't need credit for that. But as I can see now, if you're um in a situation where someone like Canelo gets the same deal as you and signed to the same company, everybody ain't going to say, oh, that's a bad deal, why he do that? But they'll say, oh, Demetri Andre should have signed a deal with PBC. And Showtime. He's on Showtime now. Finna have a bigger fight than Charlo's. The guy y'all said that was, he was ducking. That fight gonna be bigger. Not as far as uh, him and Benavidez bigger than Canelo. I'm saying as far as a better fight. I better be fighter of the year. I better be fighter of the year. But um, what I'm saying is he's a better businessman. You know why you ain't never heard nobody say this before? Because they don't care. They don't care. They're going to tell you what's going to get them a check. What's going to send you. Uh, Y'all going to cash out them fools uh, some money by some lies. And they're going to be like, oh, man, they believe what I said about Spence or so-and-so. I'm going to keep saying it. That's what they want to hear. See, bro, don't, I'm not on this channel. You not, you can't force me. You can't pay me to tell you no lie. I'm going to tell you what I want to say, what I'm going to say, and the things I'm saying now, the reason why I'm talking so fast and I know so much is because I'm really like that. I'm not really up here to make up no lies or uh, sugarcoat anything. When it comes to the fact that uh, Demetri Andre is a way better businessman than y'all will give him credit for. Same way with Terrence Crawford. He's a way better businessman than y'all will give him credit for. There's a lot of people that have opportunities and know how to uh, do things. Especially with um, especially with how everything is going right now, Demetrius Andre uh put himself in a position where he's with PVC and the zone. So people can't really say, well, he hasn't um tried all avenues. It's some guys that just sat at PVC and said, nobody's fighting me. Crossed their arms and said, I can't get a fight. Come on, man. Y'all got dudes selling half a million pay-per-views talking about they can't get a fight with somebody. But y'all see now the ducking thing is a strategy. That definitely has to, has to go away. The lies about... And, and stay out of people's business. If you don't learn anything from this video, if you don't know nothing about the boxing business for real, stay out of it, man. Because I don't want to hear none of these fake fans. And all these uh fake commentators... I see these guys that work for uh, platforms like ESPN and Showtime. Now they want to say, oh, Demetri Andre, he can beat anybody. He can beat Benavidez. He can beat this person. But this is the same guy who said that, oh, Andre need to get his career together. Now, you see how these guys, they're paid to lie in Boston. That's why you got to have your TV on mute for real. Shannon Sharp, trust me, Shannon Sharp, professional athlete. If he tells you that you need your TV, he watch sports on mute. If Shannon Sharp tells you as a professional athlete who's in the Hall of Fame and does this every day on TV and hangs around most of the people that's even calling some of these games and fights that he's talking about. If he tells you to have TV on mute, you better take it as your word. You better take it. You better take his word for it because these people are definitely telling a lot of stories when it comes to certain things certain stories that comes out man I'm just like hold on man he didn't want to fight who he didn't want to fight Charlo oh, okay why because um he pulled out of the fight because he didn't want to fight him he ducked him okay so, that's it? Yeah. Who said that? Charlo did. 
Bro, what? How long have you been following Charlo? Not that long, but why would him and his brother lie? It's called promotion, man. It's WWE, man. It's called promotion. If you ask Spence right now, all those shirts he did, you think I'm sitting here mad that uh, Earl Spence got a uh, the the shirt, um, the little Terrence Crawford shirts about um, the fish and on the big fish and all that stuff. Come on, man! Ain't nobody worrying about all that. It was just promotion. Shoot, I'll take one of those shirts right now. It was just promotion, though. People take things too serious. That's why when a lot of this stuff goes on, you see fans be confused because they're regurgitating bad information. Then, when the fighter loses, and then people say, hey, man, how did you lose to so-and-so? You said he was ducking you, and he, he wasn't that good. How could you lose to him? Then you got to explain, well, man, I wasn't really saying what I believe. I was just promoting the fight. But uh, I feel like with Andre, he's only going to uh, – People gonna finally see that uh, with the tables turned and the things that's going on now, that he's actually did everything possible that he can do, especially with what he's uh, been dealt with as far as uh, bad contracts and just different things. Um, I don't feel like uh, people really uh, take in consideration what the things he's done, especially to get back on track, to get his career back on track. Because a lot of people, they want his career to fall. If you ask a lot of these boxers, man, I know a lot of guys uh, that was top fighters early in the pros and the business side, they just, <laughs> some of these people, they just let you fall to the side. Once you out there on your own, a free agent, sometimes you stay a free agent, you'll never come back. And with Andre and him having to fight Benavidez at 35, it's like, man, <sighs> people got to realize is Canelo going to be taking these kind of fights at 35? That's all I want to know. If he's not, somebody in the comments remind me to make a video about uh, Canelo uh, uh, taking uh, the type of fights that Terrence Crawford and uh, Demetrius Andre is taking. Since he want to compare himself to uh, Floyd, I want to have more, beat more champions than Floyd. Well, I want you to fight uh, elite competition at 35, 36 years old like Terrence Crawford. And I ain't talking about Fighting no Jamel Charlo. I tell my, I want you to fight a, uh, a Terrence Crawford, someone at that level. I want you to fight a top pound for pound boxer at 35 years old. If you don't do it, nah, you ain't the best. Just cause of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. We gotta realize what we what we got people out here doing right now. You think this dude wait until he was 35 and want to fight Benavidez? You're a, if you think that, you're a fool, and I don't want you around here. If you think this man waited until he was 35 years old, so you know what? Benavidez, he just got in his prime. He just became, he just got his grown man strength. I want to fight him. Come on, man. Be serious. People been saying he been ducking the whole time. He ain't even want to fight nobody. You think he's waiting to get to 35 and say, hey, man, I want to fight the guy they call the monster. Okay. I understand. I understand that I don't understand. That's insane, man. But the game's definitely changing, though. People got to start realizing, man, uh, what you hear and what you see is not really the, uh, see, now, this is what, see, this is what YouTube Shorts is around for. You know why YouTube Shorts is around? It's because people are so dumbfounded on things. They don't even know what goes on, and the information be right there on their nose. They need a YouTube Short to say, hey, in 1995, so-and-so did this for so-and-so, and he should get the credit. And then people be like, oh, I didn't know so-and-so did that. Man, just like with Adrian Bronner. I'm going to say that for another video. 
But man, Adrian Bronner has done lots of things for fighters and won't get credit for it and won't get help, won't get nothing. One thing you got to realize, man, what, you can help somebody, but when you need help, don't expect the same thing to happen for you. And I'm not just talking about finance-wise. Finance, finance, finance wise. I'm talking about overall. Just this whole situation. Because with Andre, he's had, to fight, he's, had, he's had to fight his way back to this situation. He's had to. When he was on the uh, Benavidez card early this year, bro, he w- let me tell you something. Demetrius Andre is a a multiple uh champ, multiple world champion. Bro, why is he fighting second or third? He not even a, he wasn't even a co-main event. I don't think. I think he was under uh Boots Ennis on the card. And what did he say? You th- did you hear him saying, oh, man, they got me up here fighting last, man. If, Char- if that would have been Charlo, he would have been whining. Charlo ain't multiple uh, weight class champion nowhere. World champion nowhere. And no weight classes. Not different weight classes. If that would have been Charlo, he would have been like, man, they got me up here fighting these guys. And I'm a champion, and they got me fighting... On the undercard, I'm supposed to be main event. I ain't lost to nobody. Why guys who ain't had belts yet? Why they got opportunities I don't? Now things are starting to change now. This this last era, whatever uh Andre and uh Crawford do this last couple of months, uh as far as let's just say the last couple of years of their career however long they want to make uh make it last but uh there'll definitely be um some guys who's going to close out this era with a bang a lot of things that uh people like uh want charlo and other people to do soon he'll be doing he'll be doing that very soon uh he feels like uh he's in a position where he can um uh, compete with everyone he still has the talent enough to do it. He's still trying to prove himself. Whether if it's uh, good or bad, he still has to prove himself. So there's not really uh, much he can really uh, change about his situation other than to win. Because right now, most of the people that uh, either came in with Demetrius Andre or was ranked over him or people tried to put over him, they either retired or they're about to retire. Or they need to retire. So that's definitely something I uh, consider when I'm looking at his business acumen and things like that. His health. He's done a lot of things. People will say, well, he hasn't been in hard fights. Hey, look, man. Like I say, if you think anybody was ducking Jamel Charlo after that performance he put on Canelo. Okay. If you think that that uh, Jamel Charlo could get in the ring with Benavidez and fight him right now, then I'm going to just let you have it. I ain't going to argue with you. But um, the business of everything, you know, people got to realize a lot of these guys aren't really bringing certain guys in to uh, bring a certain guys into PBC like that. They're not really... um having certain guys coming in especially uh when you know um with the whole situation with uh Richard and Hitchens Richard and Hitchens had to uh go over to match rooms his own why because guys like Andre that made it to where you can have good business done over there bro let me tell you how fake some people are some people had a problem with the zone, bro. As soon as Devin Haney got over there, they was like, oh, you know what? That's an okay deal right there. He can have his own company and promotional company. Yeah, bro. Everybody can. Everybody can, bro. When Jamal Charlo got when Jamal Charlo got offered a, uh, a contract, he could have had the same thing, bro. When Tank got offered one, he could have had the same thing. So to make it seem like it was a one, it's only, only, it's only good for this guy but not that guy, 
Man, people are just playing sides, man. Devin Haney make good deals all the time. But I'm not finna sit up here and act like he the only guy that's knowledgeable about, about the things he's doing. Come on, man. You have other guys that's doing the same thing that's older. You just have don't have the opportunity. Devin Haney can't make nobody fight him right now. A lot of these guys got to get in the ring. That's what he's been saying now. That's why he calling out certain guys now. Like, oh, they don't want to fight. So I might as well just leave him alone. I'm not even going to entertain that. Because I've been trying to fight him for a minute now. <laughs> just like with uh, Boo Boo Andre. I've been trying to tell people already. Then you got people jumping in my comments. Bro, every time I see someone, a Latino fan, say doo-doo in my comments. They call the man doo-doo. Bro, I've been watching Boo Boo Andre for a very long time, man. At least 10 years. Bro, I keep, even me, I forget sometimes a man named Boo Boo. Why do you got guys that's Latino jumping in my comments talking about Boo Boo? Bro, let me tell you something. There's at least 100 boxers I've seen before the meet Andre. Bro, I don't know none of their nicknames, bro. Like, to know a boxer's nickname, bro, you have to be a real fan. Like I said, bro, Demetrius Andre, he's been promoting himself very well, bro. A lot of people know him. The thing he did with Canelo, that must have made him famous because I see a lot of people now starting to say, oh, well, yeah, I like what he's doing and the type of things he's got, got going on. I respect him. He, I respect what he's doing. Because now they know the writing's on the wall and a lot of guys that they like, they won't be uh, too happy about what, what's gonna happen to them if they catch that loss. Because a lot of guys do not wanna lose to certain people. And I don't know why they don't wanna uh, lose to Demetrius Andre. I guess it's because of, uh, I guess the fans' perspective of, but you see Benavidez, he's a real warrior. This is why I've been supporting Benavidez all these years before I've supported Charlo. Not before, but I've supported Charlo, but just I've been kind of leaning towards Benavidez since the pandemic, since 2020. Because Benavidez was busy. Going to work, y'all, 22, 23, let's go. I'm like, man, you fighting these guys? Still young, man. Like, about to fight somebody 30 something years old. He's only 23, 22. I'm finna fight him. Let's go. Top guys, champions. Then you got Canelo talking about he only beat Andre Durrell. Bro, so? Canelo, I mean, Caleb Plant just did it. Y'all all like the fool. Oh my God, Caleb Plant knocked out Durrell. I'm like, yeah. A lot of people have knocked them out, I guess. Well, not knock him out, but you know what I mean. Sometimes when another guy does something, he gets all the credit. They don't give credit to anybody else. That's why the business right now is very important that people realize we cannot kill all the rumors about uh, why Demetrius Andre has uh, not fought uh, Charlo. We have a lot of boxers right now that has the same kind of story as Demetrius Andre, Tim Zhu. I haven't seen not one YouTube channel accuse Tim Zhu of ducking Charlo, but they'll say the same thing about Demetrius Andre when he was in the same situation. You see what I mean? American fans are harder on American fighters than fans are that's outside of America. Because the expectations they have and the way they come up with certain scenarios of how one guy is scared of another guy. When you really think about it, these guys are boxers and we got to argue about if somebody's scared of somebody. Grown men with kids. The fans and the boxers. Both have grown men with kids and sitting up here saying, well... This man, he isn't this and he isn't that and he's ducking and he's scared. Man, you obviously don't know boxing. When you hear a dude saying that ducking and stuff, bro, they don't know boxing like that. Like, it's another level. That Morpheus Neo level, they not on that. They on that Trinity level. They ain't on the Morpheus Neo level. They just, they just along for the ride. 
They ain't on the Oracle. See, I'm see, I'm close to what the Oracle was. I ain't there yet. But I'm I'm on that type of level right now, where I'm not even. I don't even see like a name no more. I just see a person and their accomplishments and what they've done and what they've said and how they've stuck to their word and what they proved. That's how you gotta stick to unboxing. All this superficial, all this other stuff that goes on, the WWE, Stone Cold Steve Austin smashing the beer and drinking it, all that other stuff, that's that's what everybody else like. I'm just I just like the results and the things that goes on as far as inside the ring, but all the other stuff, I'm I'm not alone for that stuff. I don't even like that kind of talk to be honest with you. The business has to be right, like when you really think about it, I want to leave a good track record because when you look now and you go to, let's just say you go to a guy's ch Boston channel right now and you look at a fight or a conversation about a fight from five years ago, bro, most of these guys were still calling Spence A-side of July, man. This guy's is running around with 300,000 ch subscribers right now. They were calling Spence A-side in July. I don't care what Crawford talking about. He ace side. Smith ace side. <laughs> a lot of people be talking crazy, man. A lot of people. Can't no uh, fighter bully me into saying anything that they want to say. They not the only ones that's out here doing combat, too. That's another thing. All these guys really think, like, yeah, I'm the only one doing a combat, and if this guy saying something to me, man, everybody doing combat these days. A lot of people ain't even fighting no more. So that's a whole nother situation. But with that, the, help, the hand they've dealt with Demetrius Andre, it's going to be a long time they're going to have to deal with this situation. Because the information I'm dropping, you ain't going to get this nowhere else. It's boxing secrets for real. I don't just have that as a caption. Only here you gonna get this type of information. You got guys that's fan of uh, Demetrius Andre and all them, that, but they won't. They won't even explain why we in this predicament or why he's a great businessman or why he's done certain things uh, better than what even Charlos have done. Most of the guys that um, Demetrius Andre has fought. A lot of the top contenders went around him and fought. I didn't see none of the uh, people uh, say that. But when you see uh, comments about certain things, pe people know about uh, certain fighters. That's why that's why guys will say, hey, uh, Andre said Crawford shouldn't come to 168. Or they'll say, now we want to take uh, what Andre says is credibility when we need him. To go against Crawford's and what he's saying, I don't like Craw uh, Crawford coming to 168. So I'ma post what uh, Andre said about coming to 168. Don't come up here and all this other stuff. But when Andre is saying, "Hey man, I'm trying to fight this person, this person, and that person," no nah, man, you ducking. So a lot of these guys, man, they go with narratives, man. A lot of narratives, stuff that kids been doing. A lot of kids, they, they go through situations like that as far as with the boxing. They'll be in a situation where they'll be like, oh, I think so-and-so ducking. But now we have guys who's actually, basically when you come in t commenting on fights like that, you, you're basically in the business. And you're in the business carrying yourself like this? That's not good. So we got to change a lot of that that's going on now. Once we change all that, we'll be good, man. It'll be back to normal. Everybody will be back to where where we need to be. But right now, it is a lot of people uh, holding themselves accountable as far as. But uh, that's all I got for this uh, segment. Um, I feel like I've basically um, laid out a lot of information in this. If anybody wants a part two to this, let me know. But uh, right now... I'm going to be throwing out details, debunking a lot of things that people said about uh, people like Demetrius Andre and other people. Because if I don't do that, then 
we're going to be in a situation where a lot of these lies and things are just going to um, be on the surface and it's not really going to um, get debunked like it should be. Um, I don't know what the series should be called, but um, hey, if anybody got a little uh, suggestion as to uh, what I should name this segment, is it debunking, uh, debunking uh, lies about Demetrius Andre or whatever? Because it's basically all it is. There's a lot of information I got out there. This is a huge one that's been sitting out there that I've always had, but I have a lot more. This ain't, this isn't the only thing that um, I know about as far as with his situation. It's just one of many. But for people to not realize that the guys that y'all say are the best boxing businessmen, they've been following his moves to PVC and uh, to the zone. So it it depends, and I don't I don't want to make it about other things, but it it seems like if you're if you're in a position like Demetrius Andre, people are not gonna believe you. They are definitely not gonna believe you. We have it hard as uh American fighters. American fighters have it very hard. You see how they see, and it's no disrespect, but. Tim Zhu has a, doesn't have as many uh, world championships as uh, Demetrius Andre, but you see how people are afraid to speak on Tim Zhu ducking, accusing him of ducking uh, Jamel Char- Jamal Charlo. Jamel Charlo, they won't say that about Tim Zhu because they already know it's a lie, and a whole country will come take you down. But. When it comes to other people like Jamal, uh, not Jamel Charlo, but Demetrius Andre, and they feel like he don't have any much support. Oh, when they feel like a boxer doesn't have support, oh, they gonna go, they gonna go all in on you because they know, oh, the fans don't care. They gonna pay me for saying this. They'll pay me for saying this, so the fans don't really care about none of that. They know about these certain things. But really, they don't know the true story. They just know what you told them. And that's why I'm doing the things I'm doing now. But thanks for the support. Everybody who uh, who uh, voted for my, uh, voted for the poll of um, who y'all want to hear more about. And uh, I'm going to send y'all more stories later on. But that's all I got. Like and subscribe.